Hello everyone, Debark is here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome once again to another flight on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, uh, it's, it's 4th of February and it's around, uh, I believe, 12 something noon. And uh, we are here at the Brussels Airport. Now, Brussels Airport or Brussels National, as it's also known, is located 12 kilometers or 6.5 nautical miles or 7.5 statute miles northeast of Brussels in the municipality of uh, Zaventem in the Flemish region of Belgium in the province of uh, Flemish Brabant or as it's known in Dutch Flams Brabant or in French Brabant Flamand Serving close to 25 million passengers in 2019, it clocked in as the 24th busiest airport in Europe. It has three runways laid out as two parallel runways, that is the 07 left 25 right, 25 right and the 07 right 25 left, and one crosswind runway, which is the 0119er. All right, the longest which I believe is the 25 right to 07 left is just above uh, 3,600 meters or 11,800 feet. Just north of Brussels Airport, you'll find uh, Melsbroek Air Base, home to the Belgian Air Forces Transport Wing. Even though it's defined as its own airfield, it shares the same runways as Brussels Airport. So it says uh, uh, northeast, north of Brussels. Okay. Which would be up over there. So that right there is the airbase we're looking at. Oh. Actually, no, I think it's the other way. <laughs> Anyways, whichever way it is, probably over there. I don't know. Yeah, but in the north. It's not really our focus today, but they share the same runways. All right, now our destination today is uh, Ibiza, uh, one of the Balearic Islands of Spain. Now, Ibiza Airport, uh, known in Catalan as Aeroport de Ibiza, or in Spanish, Aeropuerto de Ibiza, is the international airport serving uh, the Balearic Islands of Ibiza and Formentera in Spain, located 7 kilometers or 4.3 miles southwest of uh, Ibiza town. In 2020, the airport handled 2.1 million passengers, making it the 13th uh, busiest airport in the country. And as the island is a major European holiday destination, it features both year-round domestic services and several dozen seasonal routes to cities across Europe. Okay, so that's a little synopsis uh, or a little summary of our origin and uh, destination airport. And of course, we are gonna be flying this beautiful Cirrus SF-50 Vision Jet in the registration uh, November 29er to Juliet Papa. Okay, and it's just going to be me and the wifey. It's also role-playing again. The kids are not here, the virtual kids. So wifey is already there having fun. Say hello to wifey. <laughs> I don't even know her name. I haven't made up a name yet. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, so as usual, of course, the men do the hard lifting. So it's going to be me putting the luggage in the in the baggage compartment so here we go and close the door and while we're here i'm gonna um, start the external gpu 
external power. Okay, so we don't drain the batteries. Now I have already completed the walk around and pre-flight inspection and I've taken off every cover that, it, that should be removed before flight. So we're gonna head inside and uh, begin our setup, flight plan and the rest of it. And it's a little it's a, a little hazy today. Now if you're hearing some sound in the background, that's my portable heater. Unfortunately today the temperature is minus nine degrees Fahrenheit in my room. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, the heat is not helping at all. <clears throat> I mean, uh, no, not in my room. My room is like 55 degrees. But outside it's uh, minus 9. If it's still, if, it, if it's still that. Uh, yeah, it's minus 9 Fahrenheit. Okay, so looking at the flags... Uh, they are all green, so we're good to go. Now, uh, our frame rate might uh, suffer a little bit here because uh, Brussels Airport is uh, highly detailed and one of the most beautiful airports in flights in 2020. All right, so have that in mind. I have. Uh, lowered some of my graphic settings to handle that okay so without further ado let us begin our initialization starting with the database okay that is good Next is going to be system tests. Higher. Higher. Okay, Higher. that's good. Higher. That's good. Higher. And that's good. Higher. Okay, install. Stall. That's good. Stall. And that's good. All right. All right, next. Uh, going to be the initial fuel so we tell the aircraft how much fuel we have loaded with the fuel on board sink and we have uh, 284 gallons that's 1900 pounds okay and uh, weight and balance okay that's me and wifey and the empty seats And we have uh, 134 pounds, of course. Needless to say that most of that is wifey's. <laughs> all right. Yeah, she carries the heavy load all the time. Okay. And uh, next is the flight plan. So, origin is the Brussels National Airport, Echo Bravo Bravo Romeo. And uh, destination is uh, Lima Echo India Bravo, Ibiza. Okay, so we'll stop here for a minute and do our flight briefing. With Volanta as, as usual. Okay, here we are, November 2902 Juliet Papa. We are SF50 Vision Jet. Our origin is uh, Brussels Airport with the ICAO and IATA codes, Echo Bravo Bravo Romeo and Bravo Romeo uniform to Ibiza Airport, Lima Echo India Bravo or India Bravo Zulu, IATA. And of course, our, our alternate is... Uh, 
Barcelona International Airport, Aeropuerto de Barcelona. Jose Tarradellas El Prat. Can't remember, I think. <laughs> All right. Now, um, flight briefing. We have uh, our weight, zero fuel weight at uh, 4,100 pounds. Payload is 380 pounds. And uh, fuel required 1858 pounds, but we rounded it up to 1900. So we're carrying 1900 fuel, carrying 42 pounds extra fuel. Takeoff weight is uh, 5898 pounds. Well, if you add 42, that's what we're going to be taking off with. Flight time is 3 hours and 7 minutes. That's from takeoff to landing. If you add the 20 minutes, 10-minute uh, taxi here, 10-minute taxi at Tibetha, that would be 3 hours and 27 minutes. All right, we're going to be cruising at 29,000 feet, flight level 290. And uh, the distance is uh, 894 nautical miles. And of course, here is our route, our route, depending on what side of the pond you are located. Okay, we're going to be taking off two, runway 25 right. And it's going to be Rousey to Gulf to Rousey. Uniform Tango 27 to Gotenkin. And uh, Gotenkin. <laughs> and Uniform November 852 to Giller. I'm about to bite off my tongue trying to pronounce things correctly. <laughs> Oh my goodness, don't mind me, I'm a linguist. I, I have fun trying to pronounce other languages. I hope that uh, doesn't offend anybody or the people I'm butchering their language. Okay, so Uniform Tango 27 to Gotanka, Uniform November 852 to Giller, direct to Geneva, direct to Incas, direct to Balzi, uh, Uniform November 852 to. Pivas, Uniform Zulu 237 to Solid, direct to Demib, direct to Polensa, and Polensa 4 Victor is going to be our arrival to Ibiza, and we're landing at runway 06. It's going to be uh, an ILS arrival. All right, so that's, uh, that's our route. All this, uh, we don't really need to look at so times our timing we're supposed to be departing from here at uh, 1250 Zulu which is uh, 150 p.m. local time actual takeoff scheduled for uh, 1300 Zulu which is 2 p.m. local time and uh, landing at Ibiza is scheduled for 1550 Zulu, which is um, 450 p.m. local. And uh, arrival at the parking spot at the FBO is going to be uh, 1600 Zulu or 5 p.m. local time. Now, this is predicting that we're going to be uh, 17 minutes late, so we'll see. We'll see how that works out. As far as our weights, uh, we've already dealt with it. Passengers are zero because it's just me and wifey. We're considered pilots since we're sitting on the pilot seat. Okay. And uh, zero fuel weight I've mentioned. And that's that. All right. Do we have any step climbs? I don't believe so. Let's, let's see. My goodness, it's cold. Actually, it should be before all this. It should be before. Okay, I'm going to keep this here because we're going to use it to enter the flight plan. All right. Uh, do we have any steps? No, no steps. It's just going to be... Flight level 290. 
All right. So that's that in a nutshell. And um, let's look at uh, what you might call it, Navigraph. All right. So this is what the departure looks like. The SID, uh, SID standard instrument departure, just for the non-aviation savvy uh, audience. So this is the Rousey 2 Gulf terminates at Rousey and that's where the main body of the route begins and uh, goes all the way. So we're going to be flying past the Alps but just at the very outskirts of it. Okay, so it goes all the way to Polenza here and after Polenza that's where the star begins. The star is the standard terminal arrival. Okay. All right. So let's look at the the SID with the chart. So looks like we only have one one altitude restriction. Um, going to be flight level 60 unless our QNH is below 977 hectopascals, which it is not, I don't believe. I think we're uh, higher than 1000. So we're concerned with the flight level 60 to cross uh, Huldenberg. Okay. Now we take off runway heading and as soon as we cross, as soon as we reach 1700 or above, we make an immediate left turn uh, to connect to Bravo Romeo 101 and then uh, with the 310 degree radial of uh, Huldenberg all the way to Bravo Romeo 102 and then direct to Remba direct to Retax direct to Rousey okay let's see what the instructions say here this seed requires a minimum climb gradient of 7.0% up to 3200 okay we're capable of doing that all right, um, traffic routing via retax to Rousey and planned above uh, flight level 245 shall cross retax or a beam retax at or above flight level 250. So we will intend to cross retax at or above 25,000 feet. I think we will already reach our top of this top of climb even before we reach retax, so there's no problem there. Traffic routing via Rim, uh, Rimba Retax. Okay, routing via Rimba Retax. What's ours? It's Rimba Retax. Okay. Okay, so that's the one we should be concerned with. Rimba Retax. We cross. Uh, we cross. Uh, Remba at or above flight level 100, 10,000 feet. So, if we're going through Remba, which we are, we need to cross Remba at flight level 100. So, we don't have any problems with that. So, basically, we need to cross Remba at or above 10,000 feet. We need to cross Retax at or above 25,000. By the time we get to Remba, we should have been way higher than 10,000 feet. So there's no problem right there. All right. So this is not to scale. Rousey here is actually here. But because of uh, paper, it just cut it to show us where it is. All right. So initial climb clearance is going to be flight level 60. So we're going to maintain uh, 6,000 feet until further instructions. We're going to just simulate that instructions. We're going to pretend that we have received it since I'm not flying with ATC. All right. Now I'm thinking of uh, using VATSIM for the first time once I reach 100 subscribers. Now I am at 98. So <laughs> let's make that happen. 
All right, because I've been too afraid to use that sim. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the reason is, but I have never done that before, and I'm looking forward to doing it for the first time. All right, so that's our departure, and of course, the main body of the route is uh, self-explanatory. We're going to have some uh, airways here. We're going to see them when we're entering the flight plan. Now, all the way to Palenza, I believe. All the way to Palenza here. Then we begin the approach. So let's look at the approach. Sorry, the, the arrival. So, so let's look at the star. Let's uh, overlay the chart. So with the star, also all this is not to scale, just so you know. Let's uh, hide this so we can have some more space. So you can see that all this is not to scale, otherwise it wouldn't fit the paper. So like uh, this uh, polenza here is all the way here. All the way here. So don't get that confused. So we have to cross polenza at or above 10,000 feet and we have to cross Mallorca at or above 5,000 or 4,500 of course Mallorca is right here okay and uh, Nilux which is right here we have to cross at or above uh, 4,500 and uh, India Bravo 920 at or above 4,000 800 at or above 4,000. Oxus at or above 4,000, but maximum 220 knots. And uh, 925 at or above 3,500, but maximum 220 knots. So we're going to maintain 220 knots from here all the way to 927. 927, we reduce speed to 210 knots. That's the max speed to cross it. It's going to be three, between 3,000 and uh, flight level 70. That's 7,000. All these um, altitude restrictions we're going to harden. Now, anyone that has two or more, we're going to harden the last one. Like this, two 4,000s, we're going to ignore this and harden this one so that We'll cross this above uh, 4,000, but we cross this one 4,000 on the dot. The same thing with the 4,500. We're only gonna we're only gonna take care of the first 4,500, which is uh, I mean the last one since we're coming from over there, which is the Nilux right here. All right, so. All we're going to put is uh, Polenza, sorry, uh, yes, Polenza and uh, Polenza, Poyenza, whatever, <laughs> and uh, Mallorca, no, Polenza, Nilux. India Bravo 800, India Bravo 925, India Bravo 927. No, actually, no. Um, India Bravo 9, Demev, actually, Demev, because Demev has 3000. All right, and we level off. I'm gonna, I want everything to be continuous descent. And then leveling off at uh, Demev. And of course, after Osnuk, we begin our descent. That's where we, we descend to 2000, cross uh, Fox Fox 06 at 2000. Anyway, that's a part of the approach, not the arrival. We finished the arrival. So going over to the approach, right here from Demev, I'm going to cross Demev. 3,000, maintain 3,000 until Osnuk. From Osnuk, looking at the vertical profile, from Osnuk we descend to 2,000, and that's where we capture the glide slope. Okay, and follow it all the way down. Now our 
minimums is going to be 239 feet uh, bar barometric altitude. And that's that. For missed approach, <clears throat> where is missed approach? I believe missed approach is uh, 3,000 feet altitude. Uh, where is it? Missed approach. Climb a runway heading to 800 feet, then turn right. Not before um, 2 DME and maximum 185 knots onto 172 170, 170 feet to intercept and follow the 121 radial of uh, IBA to 7 DME, then turn right to 9 DME, arc and cross. Basically, it's going to be 3,000 feet following the route or route here. We're not going to do that, so let's not uh, waste too much time on it. Now, this is an ILS, so here's our frequency 111.1, India Bravo, India. That's the, that's the identifier. All right, that's pretty much the, that's pretty much the flight plan. So let's enter it in the system. Sorry that it took so long. Um, put this on the side so we can still have access to it. And bring back the flight briefing. We're going to be looking at this to enter our flight plan. All right. So, first thing we do, let me take a sip of water. So, we start with the procedures. The departure and arrival, and we're going to leave this blank. We enter that last. All right. So departure is Rousey to Gulf, runway two, what? Rousey to Gulf. Okay, and runway two five right. Okay, so Rousey, 1,700 feet, this, 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 and this. That's correct. So, let's load it. It's usually good to show the preview. And that's the preview, and it looks legit to me. Okay. And our arrival is... Uh, Polenza for Victor. That one. Runway zero six. And that's the preview. Okay, that looks accurate to me. So let's turn that off and uh, load it. Okie dokie. Alright, everything checks out. Go back out. We leave this approach for now and uh, enter the main body of the route. So from Rousey. Oh, not. Not that. Go back. I'll go en route. Load airway. And that is uniform Tango 27, if I remember correctly. Yeah, uniform Tango 27 to Gotankin. Uniform no, Bravo. Uniform Tango 27, and the exit is Gotankin. Gotankin. 
Okay. Load that. Okay. I'm gonna put that uh, alphabetically for the next airway. All right. So from Gotenkin, put this to alphabetical. Now the next uh, airway is uh, uniform November eight five two to Giller. Uniform November eight five two. To Giller, hurry up. All right. And after Giller, I think it's a direct. After Giller, we have direct Geneva, direct Incas, direct Balzi. Okay. Geneva, Incas, Balzi, these are directs. So, close that again. Geneva. Geneva is uh, Gulf Victor Alpha. Geneva. Okay. Direct Incas. India, November. Charlie, Uniform, Sierra. Don't know why this is not uh, QWERTY. Okay, Incus and uh, direct Balzi. Okay, enter. So we have uh, we have Geneva, we have Incus, we have Balzi. Let's just make sure. Now I'm switching screens. Even though you have it on your screen, I don't have it, so I'm having to switch screens in case it looks like I'm wasting time. All right. After Balzi, we have uniform November eight five two to Pivas and uniform Zulu two three seven to Solid. Okay, eight five two Pivas two three seven Solid. All right. Eight five two to Pivas. Okay. And uh, two three seven to solid. Okay. And after that, direct Demib, direct Polenza. So we're gonna only put Demib because remember, Polenza is uh, or Poyensa, whatever it's called, is uh, I'm gonna call it Paz. Paz is. Uh, the beginning of the star so we don't need to put it so we only have dimip all right uh, so it's going to be direct dimip now for do for anyone paying attention you can see that uh, i have had to click add on route waypoint if it's if it was a direct and I'd had to click the last waypoint if it was an airway so for instance if we had an airway here I would click that and uh, add an airway but there's no airway you know so if it's a direct we add a direct we would click the waypoint but at the beginning if you noticed if you rewind the video a little bit you will see that at uh, the beginning, after the SID, what I had to click was on root, not Rousey. All right, take note of that. That's just for my for my viewers that do not uh, that are not uh, conversant yet with uh, entering flight plans on the GTC. All right, so that's that. I'll go back to the procedure. Now we can enter the approach, and the approach is um, ILS Zulu runway 06 with the DEMEV transition. Okay, look at the preview uh, show on the map, and that looks correct to me. All right, turn it off and load it. Alright, so everything is done. Now, 
we are going to enter the altitude restrictions. We're going to ignore the the departure ones and enter just the arrival ones. All right, so arrival starting from pause. So we bring back Navigraph. Looking at the chart, the first uh, put back the arrival chart. All right. So pause. We have flight level one hundred. which is 10,000 feet. Okay. And after pause, we have uh, Mallorca is 4,500 or above. Neelux is 4,500 or above. So we're going to ignore Mallorca and put Neelux. All right. Neelux 4,500. Okay. We're going to use BNAV as advisory, but we're going to control the descent ourselves. All right. After Neelux, we have uh, how many 4,000s? We have three of them. We're going to use the last one, which is Coxus. Okay. Coxus 4,000. All right. I want this to be a continuous descent until until initial approach if we can handle that. All right. And that initial approach should be what? Demev. Yes. So Demev is 3000. All right. So we're going to put 3000 from Demev. I want us to maintain 3000 until Osnuk. So Demev is 3,000. All right, and we'll leave the rest and go to Osnuk, 3,000. Okay, and uh, Fox Fox 06, which is our final approach, we'll put 2,000. And that should be that. Enable VNAV. Okay, that's good. And we are done with the flight plan. So we can step out. And uh, accept initialization. All right. Now, after that, next thing we're doing, uh, let's look at uh, our synoptics. happened to my one second guys like my map stuff is not working anymore all right that's fine probably fix it one way or another all right so um, we have everything. Uh, we we're going to get the synoptics. All right. Take a look at this briefly. And, uh, okay. 
We're going to need uh, at our current weight, which is uh, 6,000, we are max weight. We're going to need uh, 1999 feet of runway. Of course, we have more than 11,000, so we're good over there. All right. Oxygen, we have enough. We have full tank of uh, emergency oxygen and uh, IPS fluid. In uh, That's uh, ice protection system. We have enough. External power is on. We're going to be removing it soon. Baggage doors closed. Cabin doors closed. Parking brake is on. Everything here checks out the way we want it to be. All right. So... We go back and get the engine and fuel. Okay, we're almost full tanks, 1,900 each pounds. Uh, sorry. Um, well, you see, it's 142 gallon each. I don't know if this is correct. If uh, if, if the total is 2,000. It says that we have 2365. Maybe the 2000 is usable fuel. I don't know. But uh, this is what we have. Electric pump is off, obviously. And of course, because of that, fuel pressure is low. All right. So everything is good so far. Now, we are going to do our pre-flight checklist. One second. Let me check something. Okay, that's uh, anyways. All right. So pre-flight checklist. Um, I mean, before engine start checklist. <laughs> uh, pre-flight inspection is complete. Doors latched. Parking brake is on for now. Batteries one and two are on. Generators one and two on. External GPUs on for now. And uh, FedEx channel is on channel A you can see here so before start checklist is complete now engine start we're gonna do all this so no need to read them off but uh, the strobes we're gonna turn on to let the ground crew know that we are about to start okay I am also gonna take off uh, ground power oh um quickly initial altitude let's set that was supposed to be six thousand I almost forgot and other things we haven't done. Okay, we have 6,000 and uh, runway heading is going to be 244. Okay, 244. Is there anything else? Uh, yes, something else indeed. We have to set our freq our ILS frequency was 111.1. Transfer. Okay, that's good. Of course, this is the wrong uh, identifier, and that's because we're still too far away from the actual one we selected. So this should be good. Uh, transponder, let's assume that we have been given 3356. Okay, enter. All right, everything is good. All right, now we can start the engine. Okay. So, strobes are on.
just one second let me make sure that everything is fine here I'm gonna good good thing I looked at this I'm gonna take that off we don't need it anymore for now all right so um, now we do the engine start first of all we turn on the knob okay and uh, we can hear the fuel pump we can also see it indicated here and we can also see fuel electric pump on and fuel pressure is now normal so we can go ahead and start the engine by pushing the knob the button okay and monitor the engine instruments n2 is available itt temperature Oil pressure, oil temperature, N2, that's good. Battery 2 is charging, battery 1 is charging. So everything is good. Good engine start. So we can check all these off. All right. Now after the engine is started, we need to do some more stuff. One of them is um, we're going to turn on, and we should have turned it on a while ago, Master Oxygen, and it should test itself, and that's good. Fresh air to bleed. This should say bleed. Probe heat we're going to leave for now. Engine anti-ice we're going to turn on because of the weather. It's very cold. Wing anti-ice we're going to leave off until... We take off and if we see ice then we turn it on now um, ECS panel we set up enable ECS and put this on auto we have air conditioning can put this uh, somewhere here so we have some heat okay defog on and uh, windshield uh, IPS we can also turn on right so that's good next we check our oh next um, we trim up to six degrees sorry for the camera jerking six degrees on the pitch trim okay and flaps 50% Alright, and we can test our flight controls. That's aft, forward, left, and right, and that's good. And we can check our um, rudder pedals. That's left and right, and that's good. Now we can uh, remove the parking brake. Okay. All right, so everything is uh, good. You can see that the engine is feeding from the right tank, but it's on auto, so it's gonna be switching by itself every five minutes or so. You can see that it's on auto. All right, so we're good with the synops synoptic page. Go back home and put the map on. All right, so engine start checklist, we're gonna check all that off. Because we already did that. External GPU, we have disconnected. Uh, oxygen master switch is on. Avionics initialization, all units are complete. All initializations complete. Uh, cap spin been removed. Passengers briefed, seat belts are secure. Bleed switch is on bleed, okay. And uh, okay, before taxi, communicate common nav and uh, GPS been set. ADIS clearance is obtained. Uh, altimeter has been set. That's 1034 hectopascals. Transponder set. Heading and initial altitude set. Flight controls free and correct. Trim six. 
flaps 50 electric road trim that's this one it is centered toga button press okay cast messages we only have probe heat that's good seats are upright parking brake we've released brakes we're gonna check soon all right that's complete looks like the mist has cleared okay okay we're 10 minutes early that's good okay let's check the brakes uh, landing light on oh one more thing speed bugs okay I'm also going to set the minimums so that we don't forget it. And that's 239 barrel. Okay, so let's set that 239er and uh, barometric. Enter. Okay, it should be there. That's good. All right the timer because we're going to be using it okie dokie I wonder why this doesn't want to come up. Is that something I set that I shouldn't have? Oh, the minimums. Maybe remove it. Let's see. That's ridiculous. All right, we'll see what happens. Alright, 12.43, I think we can start going. Oh boy. The... The, what you call it? The starter. Alright, our taxi. Let's take a look at this uh, one more time. So we are here, we're going to be coming out, getting on Romeo 2, going to take Romeo 2, Juliet, out of 3, out of 4, out of 5, out of 6, Bravo 1, and runway 25 right, that's going to be our taxi route.
All right. Okay, landing light. I'm still wondering why. Okay. We just had to move for it to get up. That's that should be a bug. It's not supposed to happen that way in real life, but uh, better late than never. So hazy. That car should give us the right of way, but uh, no, these people can be crazy. Okay, it's not going in the same direction as us. That's good. All right, this is Romeo two. gonna be a little stuttery here sorry about that uh, as soon as we're airborne everything should come to normal and this is Juliet coming up the inner lanes and get on the outer one okay this is out of three straight so we can taxi at 30 knots that should be good that's the main terminal wow it's so hazy
Let's slow it down a little bit. Slow down real good. And that's Bravo one. Stutter is so bad. Okay, we're gonna stop here for a second. All right. All right. Um, how many minutes do we have? Now I was able to. We have five. Uh, yeah, we have five minutes to go. I was able to fix the the map thingy, so now I can zoom it. That's good. All right. Uh, what else do we need to do? We need to run the checklist. Okay, before takeoff checklist. Departure briefing is complete, landing lights on, probe heat, we can turn that on. And we can also turn the ice light on. I don't know what the, this uh, mist, who knows if there is uh, ice in it. Okay, so probe heat is uh, on. Engine IPS switch is on, wing stab off, cast messages there are none, trim is 6 degrees, uh, flaps 50%, no takeoff emergency battery cast message displayed. Okay, multifunctions being configured before takeoff checklist complete. Normal takeoff, all these we're gonna skip because that's what we're gonna be doing while the takeoff is going on. All right, we can maximize, the, oops, sorry. We can maximize the map. <coughs> and, uh, all right, that's good enough. <coughs> and uh, timer's up, that's up. All right. All right, let's go. I'm gonna s start the time. And we have a very long runway, so I'm gonna just uh, follow the yellow line. Oops. Okay, here we go. Pause 
positive rate of climb. Gear up. And flaps up. Pilot and uh, flight level change, auto throttle, GPS, I think that was a beautiful takeoff. And for now, I am going to keep this at uh, manual auto throttle. This is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, unfortunately, there is so much haze, so um, otherwise the city of Brussels looks so beautiful, but the haze is making it look a little bit ashy, <laughs> if I could use that word. Okay, increase to 10,000.
Oh, the weather is being abrupt, but uh, well, <laughs> it's uh, also a blessing in disguise. At least we can see the city and <laughs> see how beautiful it is. I don't understand what's going on. But just check that city out. My goodness, this is, this this scenery is just is just breathtaking. Absolutely breathtaking.
All right, I'm gonna do the climb checklist. But before I do that, I'm gonna increase our altimeter to the increase our altitude to 29,000. And uh, also switch our speed to FMS speed. And now we can do our climb checklist. So climb checklist, uh, first lever, of course it's FMS speed, so that's handling it. And uh, engine parameters, good. Cabin pressure is rising as should. Ice protection on the engine. Altimeter transition has been set. Climb checklist complete. And I'm going to set the minimums again. That was supposed to be 239 barometric. So let's set that. 239er, and that's on barometric. Alright. Speed bugs, we're gonna turn off the takeoff ones and uh, turn on the landing ones. Of course, uh, it's not going to be the, uh, this. We're going to wait until we are gone very far, or close to top of uh, descent, and then we set it based on uh, current situation at that time. All right, looks like everything is uh, very hazy, so. Uh, gonna see you guys close to top of climb just so that the video is not too long since there is really nothing to see everything is covered in haze all right thank you for watching so far and uh, see you at top of climb oh before I do that let's uh, just take a look at the profile of what we've flown so far on Volanta All right, that was our taxi And uh, took off. And made it turn. Okay, uh, climbing. And that's about that. That's, I love Volanta, man, just because of this depiction. Alright, guys. And of course, uh, statistics. This is our climb so far. All right. So I'll see you guys at the uh, top of climb.
Hi everyone. That's me again. Uh, okay, so now we are almost at our top of climb. As you can see. I'm gonna put this on uh, noise cancelling. Oh dear. What did I do? Oh, wrong button. Noise cancelling. Okie dokie. Alright. Oh, I think I... Uh, oh boy. Yeah, that's what I should have done. I removed the altitude setting and we we burst through the altitude, but that's fine. It looks like the haze has cleared. It's good. At least it uh, helps my frame rates. Let's see what we're doing. Had to put everything on uh, 30 frames per second, and uh, man. All right. Okay, let's do the cruise cruise uh, checklist. Those so just three items: thrust lever is as required, ice protection as required, EIS is uh, beautiful. Cruise checklist complete. All right. Uh, we'll deal with the descent checklist when we get there. Now here's how we are going to determine uh, the landing VRF. For those who do not know, we're gonna go to status and info and you can see right now based on our weight, based on the current weight, it is predicting that we're gonna be landing with the uh, VRF of 86 knots, but remember we're still burning fuel, so we're gonna still burn a lot. By the time we get there, it's gonna. I'm, I'm predicting that it's gonna be between 79 and 80 knots, but uh, let's not touch it yet. Let's just uh, wait it, wait for it. All right. Kidoki. Okay, so we're coming to Rousey. You can see, like I said, we're going to cross retax way above 25,000. And of course we did. We crossed it uh, at cruising altitude almost. All right, so on our way to Rousey, after Rousey, we're going to get on the... Uniform Tango 27 uh, exit at Grotnaquin. Uh, how long have we been recording? Don't want this to be too long. 131, okay. It's right about the uh, one and a half hour uh, time uh, frame where I usually like to keep it so that it doesn't get too boring so I'm gonna sign off of here for part one and I see you guys in part two now um, since it's uh, clear we might be crossing the Alps so when I get to I'm gonna start uh, part two as we are cruising above the Alps but uh, I'm not going to show the whole cruising because it's going to be boring. So I'll show part of it and as soon as we cross it, I'm going to cut it and uh, come back again shortly before top of uh, descent.
so this is the Barkis. Uh, see you guys in uh, part two. But uh, just before then, say hi one more time to wifey. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh lord. I thought we had Bose, it, Bose um, headsets. How come it's something else? Anyways, doesn't matter. That's uh, cynism. Why did I hear that? Alright, it's looking beautiful. Cruising. And I'll see you guys in uh, part two. This is the Barkis signing off. See y'all.